let's talk more about the science of cold immersion therapy for your health, particularly when it comes to your metabolic health, blood sugar control, fat oxidation, and even your immune system health. I want to talk today a little bit more about cold shock proteins and activating brown adipose tissue and the many health benefits that are linked with deliberate cold exposure. Let's get into the science and talk about why you should be doing this. Now, this is a great time of year to do it because most of the alpine lakes and the rivers and the oceans are available to you right now. They are sufficiently cold to induce your cold shock protein proteins to induce brown adipose tissue, which is part of the metabolic sequela, the dysfunction in the signaling of your brown fat. And the dearth of brown fat is directly tethered to obesity and diabetes. So if you're not getting cold on purpose, you are doing yourself a disservice from optimizing your metabolic health. Let's talk first then about brown adipose tissue, where it's found, and the fact that it is inducible. Now, up to now, it was thought that brown adipose tissue was just relegated to that extra fat on babies. And what makes the adipose tissue brown or beige is the enrichment of mitochondria. And so unlike other adipose tissue, like the white adipose tissue, there's, there's a dearth of mitochondria. It's more of a lipid energy depot or reservoir. But the brown adipose tissue, which again is inducible by going in ice and getting in an ice bath and getting cold on purpose, even in a lake, river, stream, or ocean, by the way, what you're doing is you're training your white adipose tissue to behave more and act more like brown fat and this process is known as beijing and that is linked with all of the many metabolic health benefits in fact one study here i want to share with you titled physiologic responses to acute cold exposure in young men this was published in 2016 in the journal plus one biology you can see here are changes in respiratory quotient increases in fat oxidation after wearing a cold vest many of the earlier studies when it came to cold immersion therapy would involve people wearing cold vests and water weighted vests that had frozen water circulating through that. And now, of course, we have many tools like the ice barrel that's available where you can get cold on purpose in your own home. But what you can see here is significant changes in fat oxidation. And if you wear a continuous glucose monitor and seeing the drop in glucose and the increase in ketones. So going back to mechanism number one, activating the brown adipose tissue, really important because of its metabolic health benefits. And, and here's another study. This one was in the Journal of Physiology and Biochemistry, browning of white fat agents and implications for beige adipose tissue to type 2 diabetes. They say that while some metabolic disorders and obesity are commonly linked to type 2 diabetes, brown adipose tissue contributes directly to the disease onset and permanence, meaning that if you have a dearth or lack of brown adipose tissue, dearth of that specific tissue will directly contribute to obesity and diabetes. And I say this because some people feel that it's uncomfortable getting cold on purpose. They have a mental hiccup or roadblock linked uh, with getting cold because maybe you have Raynaud's or maybe you have poor circulation. This is a therapy that can improve your circulatory system, can help to prime or activate that brown adipose tissue that is normally just in high concentrations in babies. And again, the mechanism of this tissue is it the mitochondria in this subtype of fat tissue known as the beige or brown fat, instead of using that mitochondria to create cellular energy known as ATP, it, it's the mitochondrial cell membranes become uncoupled and they take your excess energy and they convert it into heat. And so when you get cold, you're training your body to warm your body up more naturally by inducing the activation of mitochondrial biogenesis in the fat tissue to create more dense, enriched mitochondria that will help you heat up faster. So, so that's one of the main benefits. And again, this association between low brown fat and or beige fat and its links with obesity is quite strong. And this is why it's a hot therapeutic target. This was a, a recently published study as well. Brown adipose tissue, a translational perspective. A lot of scientists and also you know pharmaceutical companies are trying to make a brown fat mimetic. They're trying to pharmacologically synthesize what getting cold on purpose does. Uh, I don't think they're going to be successful in this endeavor. I think you know you have to get cold on purpose by doing the work yourself, going in the ice bath, going in something like the ice barrel, doing this every day. I think consistent practice is more important than total duration of time in there. I just do 60 to 90 seconds in the morning. I don't want to be shivering for my whole day, but I like it for the mental exercise, just going in, dealing with the uncomfort, and then 
you know, the, the benefit of this, you know, just thinking more simply, we talked about the biochemistry here with mitochondria and brown fat, just very simply speaking, when you get cold, your blood is being redistributed to your core, to your vital organs. And as you warm up, your blood then gets redistributed to the superficial parts of your body, you know, the skin, the muscles and the like. And that process is really good for the, the cardiovascular system and the circulatory system, the endothelial tissue. This is one of your largest uh, tissues in your body. If you were to take out all your capillaries, your arterial your venous system and spread it out, I believe it would cover six tennis courts. I mean, this is a massive organ system and most people are not training this with exercise. And so that's why it's good to get cold on purpose as well. And so uh, in so doing, you improve blood sugar health, fat oxidation, like we mentioned, but also getting into the nitty gritty on the importance of mental health as well as the immune system. So there's a really interesting uh, study here that I have here titled Cold Shock Proteins from Cellular Mechanisms to Pathophysiology and Disease. And the scientists say evidence links skewed cold shock protein gene expression pattern with cancer and inflammatory diseases. So again, by getting cold on purpose, you're activating these cold shock proteins. And those proteins are changing genetic expression that help to change your brown adipose tissue, help to upregulate the ability to be more adaptive adaptive uh, to your environment and temperature fluctuations. It turns, turns out that resilience and loss of resilience are key markers of disease prevention. And so people who, if you just think about people who are really frail, uh, people who can't go into the snow, people who can't get hot, these people generally have underlying health conditions. They have a dearth or lack of resilience. Uh, think of children. You can bring children pretty much anywhere. They're very resilient. They don't yet have these adult onset diseases. You can bring them uh, to the desert. They can go to Disneyland. They can go out in the cold. They're generally happy and fun. They're playing in the snow without a jacket on oftentimes. You know, it's usually the parents are like, hey, John, Johnny, put on your mittens. You're going to catch a cold. Well, uh, it actually turns out that getting cold on purpose helps you prevent the common cold and flus. And there was a, a recently published study in the journal Plus One 2018. This was in a, a big um, uh, employment uh, type setting where they randomized people to take a 30 second cold shower after they do their hot shower. And uh, the control group didn't change their shower temperatures uh, as they did in the intervention group. It turns out the intervention group had a 30% reduction in loss uh, of sick days in this employment study compared to the people who did not take a cold shower. So by activating these cold shock proteins, you are priming your immune system. And the mechanisms here probably have to do with the activation of these critically important cold shock proteins and how they are linked with underlying inflammatory tone and the like. And it's important to recognize that cold has been a therapy, um, an immunologic specific therapy for a long time. If you roll your ankle or you get a burn, you injure yourself, you get you know kicked in the leg playing soccer, what is the, the recommendation there? Rest, ice, compression, elevation, right? So ice and getting cold has been known to decrease chronic inflammatory pathways and acute inflammatory pathways. So just think about all the benefits you are doing to your body. If you get cold on purpose uh, consistently by getting up in the morning, doing a 60 to 90 second cold immersion, you know, as you, as you get older, your baseline rate of inflammation increases. It's called inflammaging. And, and so we can help to mitigate this age associated increase in inflammation by getting cold on purpose. Now, for you, that might start with just getting a, taking a cold shower. If you're brand new to this, that's a great place to start. But then over time, investing in a at-home tank like the ice barrel is a great tool because it just makes it so much easier to get cold faster, which I want to finish up this conversation with the benefits for the brain. We know that inflammation can lead to anxiety and feelings of malaise and, and uh, disease and so forth. Well, this study titled Short-Term Head Out, Whole Body Cold Water Immersion Facilitates Positive Affect and Increases Interaction Between Large-Scale Brain Networks found that just one five-minute cold immersion session is linked with significant changes in brain regions that are involved in anxiety, depression, and negative mood states. And so what we see here is a global shift in the brain in terms of improving mental uh, well-being and feelings of positivity and increasing altruism and enthusiasm and decreased pessimism, which I think is quite fascinating. So the scientists say this explains the widely reported enhanced mood following short-term immersions. 
If you ever see people after they do a polar plunge on January 1st, oftentimes like in the city of Chicago and, and outside of uh, Michigan, this is really popular. Even here in Seattle, people go in Puget Sound and so forth. Everyone's happy and excited. Like I went in the water and I feel great. Part of that could be linked with how activation of these cold shock proteins and the various neurochemicals and hormones that are increased when you get cold on purpose have mood altering or enhancing effects. So if you ever struggle with seasonal affective disorder or anxiety or OCD and, and this uh, attention deficit disorder, you know, depression, really important to know that you have this tool in your armamentarium and that is to get cold on purpose, whether it's a cold shower, cold lake, cold liver, cold river, stream, ocean, or an ice barrel, you have the power to improve your mental state by just getting cold on purpose. So again, to summarize, we have the metabolic health benefits, the activation or in inducement of this critically important adipose tissue subtype known as beige or brown fat. We have activation of the cold shock proteins, which can help to decrease acute and chronic inflammation. And then we also have the uh, blood sugar and metabolic health benefits here, pivoting your physiologic state and reducing glucose, increasing fat oxidation. And I think equally as important as number four, you have the ability to improve your mental well-being and your mental state. We know that we're amid a mental health crisis. Uh, I believe it was it was some statistic about 30% of, of uh, women over 40 are on some sort of psychiatric medication. 25% of children now are on... Uh, psychiatric medications, Ritalin, Adderall. Uh, we know that there's a lot of uh, drug use, whether it's Kratom, whether it's uh, marijuana, uh, cocaine, methamphetamines. Uh, these things are rampant in our society because of our unhealthy lifestyles. And so we now have a natural tool uh, that, that is not only supportive of the metabolic health challenges and obesity that many people face, but it can help to improve cognition and mental affect and, and mood states. So definitely check out this video show sponsor, icebarrel.com forward slash HIH to save. They make it really easy to do a whole body ice bath at home in the convenience of your home on your porch or your patio. Uh, get some friends involved, make it a party and just see how much better you feel when you get cold on purpose. I will link some of the, the resources that we use to construct this video in the show notes below that I will, uh, link in the description below. As always, my friends, thanks for tuning in all the way. Thanks for hitting that like button. And most importantly, I would like to know if you've benefited from getting cold on purpose. Uh, it's really been a game changer for me as I age. I'm able to maintain the same intensity in the weight room, squatting, deadlifting, all those sorts of uh, heavy, uh, intense sessions. I rely upon getting cold on purpose in the ice barrel to make sure that my body recovers from that acute stress and, and decreasing my chronic inflammation. Um, so that's it for today, friends. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and we'll catch you on a future one down the road.